Malawian poet David Rubadiri's An African Thunderstorm. A little bit about the poet. He was born in 1930. As I said, he's Malawian. In fact, in 1964, he became Malawi's first ambassador to the United States. Uh, he left the government, unfortunately, in 1965, when he and President Hastings Banda had a disagreement. He did then return to the Washington Embassy after Banda's removal from power. Uh, and we can talk about here, well, there are two interpretations. The one, and the one that I'm going to be talking about mostly, is the fact that this poem is about a thunderstorm in Africa. And there's no denying that. There's way too much uh, imagery, descriptive language, um, to tell me otherwise. However, and I do agree with this, there's a strong possibility that the poem um, in alludes to the effect of colonial domination on Malawi, considering that the country achieved independence in the 1960s at the time when the poet lived. Um, also, there are a couple of lines and phrases where you think to yourself, why would Rubadiri put that there unless he wanted to make a statement about colonialism? So we will look at that. I think what is important is that for you to analyze the poem um, with the main understanding being that there is a thunderstorm brewing and taking place and it arrives and the destruction that it brings, but also have the knowledge that it could be about colonialism. Remember, this is an English prescribed poem. It's not a history exam. So you're not expected to know too much about Malawi's politics political stance and situation and circumstance at the time. Okay, so just keep that in mind. But I think if you are able to identify where in the poem and be able to quote a couple of lines or words that uh, allude to that, have that knowledge. All right, let's have a look. First of all, I've put at the top here, it's very descriptive, the language. There's a couple of figures of speech. Um, the poet is, is pretty good at creating an image in, in your mind of this build-up and, and the arrival of a thunderstorm and what is nice about it is that the diction is very simple and clear it, it's a poem that can be studied um, in the earlier uh, grades of high school grade 8 or it can be studied uh, more in depth in grade 12 as it is prescribed now so let's have a look from the west clouds come hurrying with the wind there's nothing difficult there um, when thunderstorms arrive in Africa they are usually coming from the west um, and you know for Africa rain is a blessing because uh, many areas of the continent are quite arid and dry so um, particularly poorer communities they rely on the rainfall solely um, to grow their crops however a thunderstorm is also very destructive and uh, that is referenced in this poem these clouds come hurrying when a thunderstorm uh, builds up it doesn't generally take a long time it happens quite quickly due to the strong convection currents and the updrafts so um, and it's windy because the wind will obviously back uh, that movement of air uh, what causes uh, a thunderstorm generally anyway well you have to have strong updrafts and you've got to have a high pressure and a low pressure and the steeper the pressure gradient um, the stronger the wind and the more updraft you're going to have but this is not a, a geography lesson okay um, turning sharply here and there okay why would they be turning sharply well when clouds form if you have those very strong convection currents um, it's going to cause a lot of updrafts and those clouds are not going to be nice grade 2 clouds that you draw in your drawings they're going to be irregular shaped um, you think about your thunderstorms, your cumulonimbus clouds with the anvil at the top. It is not a regular shape. Also, there are very strong um, currents up high up altitude as well, causing that irregularity. And in fact, they are turning sharply here and there. That shows how sporadic it is. It's like random, okay, like a plague of locusts. And if I look at that simile, well, that that is showing me the destructive nature of a plague of locusts. A plague of locusts will arrive. They will devour an entire crop within minutes okay um, it's also similar in that because from a distance those that plague of locusts is going to be like one black dark mass coming along okay and that is going to look like a, a cloud coming too um, whirling tossing those present participles they're telling me that it is happening right now it's immediate 
Um, and everything's happening quite quickly too, because they come hurrying. Um, tossing up things on its tail. If you think about um, the wind that's coming and the clouds that are coming, it's just kind of like throwing up all sand and debris as it's coming along, like a madman chasing nothing. And if you think about a, a crazy person, like a madman, um, there's no direction, there's no clear motive, it's just completely random, it's erratic. Okay, like a, like a thunderstorm won't necessarily travel along a set path, it can change direction. Um, sometimes thunderstorms do like a 360 and they come back, so it's, it cannot be monitored very easily. Pregnant clouds ride stately on its back. Okay, now on its back, the wind's back here, we have these clouds coming along, but now these clouds have uh, gathered quite a lot of um, condensation in there. Um, after all that updraft and the, the water vapor and the evaporation has led to reaching dew point temperature and those clouds are ready to drop their load somewhere very soon. So those clouds are dark. Why are they dark? Because obviously the sun can't penetrate all those water droplets and so the bottom of the cloud is dark and uh, they are pregnant so the clouds are personified um, and they're going to give birth to this rain soon. Ride stately on its back, gathering to perch on hills like sinister dark wings. When a cloud is so heavy like that, and you think about Table Mountain, the clouds will be quite low, okay? Especially if they're so heavy. So um, it's going to be as if this cloud is a bird perching, sitting on top of this hill. In, in that the hill, at the top of the hill may not even be visible. That's how low the cloud is. Like sinister dark wings. Well, they're dark. Why? Because, as I've mentioned, the clouds are obviously dark and they're sinister because it's quite scary. It's quite intimidating when you see a mass of clouds coming like that, coming quickly. And, and you know that it's an area that's ooh, maybe quite close to the equator or whatever the case is. And uh, the thunderstorms are extreme. So sinister, that kind of impending doom coming along. You've got demons here, dark wings, scary. The wind whistles, nice alliteration there, mimicking the sound of the wind, literally, by and trees bend to let it pass. Even the trees, are, like no matter how strong they are, have to give way to this wind and the storm that's coming. Okay, Now, if we backtrack a little bit and we say, okay, where is colonial domination possibly in these two stanzas? Well, it starts off with from the west. Uh, you can think about the colonialism, uh, the colonizers, sorry, coming from the west uh, into Malawi, uh, coming from North America, even from Europe, and you can talk about trees bend to let it pass. It's, 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 as, if, it's as if um, the whole of Malawi is now at the mercy of those who are entering it, who those foreigners, those um, colonists. Right, in the village, screams of delighted children toss and turn. Okay, so here it was like on the horizon and it was coming. Now we're looking at, okay, how is the, the people in the village reacting to this approaching thunderstorm? Screams of delighted children. They are oblivious to the fact that there is a thunderstorm coming. Like, and even if they do see a thunderstorm coming, they like not worried about it. Maybe it's exciting, you know. They don't understand the destruction that it can cause, particularly to the crops and even the, the houses. Because we're not talking about fancy houses here. Toss and turn in the din of the whirling wind. Okay. They are also playing. Toss and turn, a bit of alliteration there, in the din of the whirling wind. The din, a din is a noise that you can't hear distinct sounds. It's like, you think about a whole hall of people and everybody's talking, you can't hear anything um, specifically, it's just a, a noise. So here again we've got this whirling wind, there are those W's there, repetition, again mimicking the sound of the wind. And, and woman even continues on to the next line. So the children are oblivious to it, they're not bothered. The women have babies clinging to their backs, and I put their image of Africa, um, stereotypical of, of an African community there, dart about in and out. Okay, notice those short lines, 
to show that it's it's very quick that it's irregular that they are rushing now to try and get their children and prepare everything inside um, because of the storm that's coming and i've put the rhyme and short lines creates the image of the winds haphazard movement um, but also the the mothers themselves rushing around quickly madly again madly notice as well but if we look at the lines in general of this poem they are very irregular some are quite long some are quite short you know why would i put woman on its own and i think that emphasizes uh, or supports the notion that the storm that is coming is irregular and it's not following a set pattern and the wind is suddenly strong and then it's not so strong you have these gusts of wind okay um, and the clouds aren't taking a nice shape they're not taking a nice direction it's all very confusing it is a tumultuous force coming it is impending doom okay the wind whistles again by whilst sorry by whilst trees bend to let it pass again bending to let it pass and if we do go back to uh, colonization we can talk about how again everybody at the mercy of those invading the country clothes wave like tattered flags and there you were like okay hang on a second i understand what he's saying if you think about a flag and it's tattered it's like all torn and rough on the edges and stuff and their clothes aren't going to be nice smart clothes so their clothes would probably be a bit ripped in that and they are blowing around like flags because of the strong wind also the effect that simile has of creating disorder and a lack of control because the people can't do anything to stop the storm coming but you know why include flags that's also like flashing lights for some form of uh, political um, colonial rule coming in there okay also remember Rubadiri fell out with his president a year after his appointment as ambassador so is he talking about the repressive rule of African leaders is he referring just to colonial rule and the destruction that resulted um, in African society because of it you know um, flying off to expose dangling breasts as jagged blinding flashes okay if you look here it looks like this line wants to go here to expose dangling breasts as jagged blinding flashes whereas as that is actually one kind of thought and this is the next thought okay so the enjambment sometimes can be a little bit ambiguous but what is happening is that the clothes are literally flying off because the wind is so strong and it is literally exposing dangling breasts um, possible interpretation of rape of the African woman uh, by those um, from the West to expose those dangling breasts also uh, that dang those exposure to being naked means to be vulnerable uh, to strip somebody of their dignity uh, so you could argue that maybe jagged blinding flashes or the lightning obviously being jagged blinding flashes uh, simply the bright lightning because now the storm has arrived rumble tremble and crack um, as i said the thunderstorm is now here and it is quite a violent thunderstorm so you're going to have loud cracks of thunder that those words all being on a matter pier um, amidst the smell of fired smoke well fired smoke fired smoke again is that not firing of rifles cannons that kind of you know imagery going on there mm, possibly um, and the pelting march of the storm also the word march like soldiers and army marching in so those that's another word that you can quote if asked about the diction and how it shows uh, colonial domination all right um, but the pelting a pelting means it's relentless it's coming it cannot be stopped it's intimidating bombarding um, the storm is coming and it cannot stop it you cannot stop it and when it arrives it's there there's nothing you can do about it except try and survive it until it passes a couple of notes there um, present participles create an immediate and ongoing effect and the anticipation of the storm's arrival is both exciting and frightening it is exciting because 
for the children number one who are oblivious to it and it's like I remember as a kid myself when it was a thunderstorm even though I used to get quite scared sometimes um, seeing it coming and and seeing the the people rushing around to try and like oh prepare put the you know uh, animals inside and all that it was kind of exciting but at the same time the adults and well um, we know that a thunderstorm is going to possibly destroy crops if it's really heavy rain it's going to wash away plants and uh, destroy homes etc etc if we want to talk about uh, colonialism we can say it is incredibly frightening of, of what is happening because the people are completely at the mercy of those coming from the west 